And also, too, uh, let's put our hands together one more time. And let's welcome again back Brother Swift. Amen. I mean, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, right? Amen. Hey, listen, I know we lost half of us to go downstairs, but we're still here, right? The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Amen. And so we want to encourage your, your faith this morning. Gary and I have had the opportunity uh, over the past, last year we had 117 people that came to the Lord uh, in our services. 117 saved. Isn't that cool? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that this morning. We've already had 17 that have come to the Lord since January this year, and uh, so God is just is moving in a mighty way. Seeing lots of people healed mm -hmm. and uh, delivered and set free from lots of addictions, and God. it's good to be in a place of like-minded believers that that uh, know God is still changing lives. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We had a request to do this song uh, this morning, and uh, I hope it blesses you. It's called "The Blind Man." It's all it all. Working in town one afternoon, attending some business affair. Oh, yes. I heard a commotion a couple streets over, wondered what was happening there. Then a young man came running from in that direction and he stopped to catch his breath. I asked him to please tell me what's the hurt. Dragging you down And you've tried everything You can possibly think of There's no more thief to be found That very same Jesus That altered the future For the blind man The deaf and the man Well he's still reaching out In your hour of trouble One touch and you're never the same so good to be local where our family can join us. I mean, it's just, it doesn't happen very often. We've been traveling everywhere from Canada to California. It's just been crazy, but God has been so faithful. Put your hand up. God's been faithful in your life. What a blessing. You said nine baptized? What an incredible blessing to have nine people surrender. Because when you get baptized, you're surrendering. 
You're, you're releasing the old man and you're saying, as the word of God says, I'm a new creation. Old things are passed away. Put your hand up and you said, thank God old things are passed away. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be clean this morning. Yes. Amen? Yes. You may have taken a shower, but that doesn't mean you're clean. Right. <laughs> we go into places and we went, went into one, and I won't even mention where it was, but uh, in the last three or four months, we went into a place and they didn't look clean at all. Now, we don't go to many churches like that, but we went to this one and they loved us to death. I mean, they came up and we can't even get out of the car and they're running at us. But you can tell that it's one of those inner city churches and they're, they're they, they, so some of them are homeless. But inside, they're so clean. Yeah, 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 right. And they're free. That's right. Because Jesus says, when he sets you free, you're free indeed. Amen. There's no doubt. <laughs> So I want to sing. I want to sing this song this morning, and maybe this morning you look on the outside so clean, but on the inside, no one in this church knows that you're going through hell. Ever, you ever been through hell? You may not be going through it now, but you've been through it. Come on, be honest. We have. You know, we almost lost our lives, Curtis and I, in North Carolina. My my three and my family and his family. And there were nine of us on the bus, and we almost died of carbon monoxide poisoning a few years ago. Brother Scott doesn't even know this story. But my wife, who's back there, just wave again, babe, so they know who you are. She went in the North Carolina hospital. They did five hours of every kind of test you can imagine. And a level 15 is death. 15, carbon monoxide poisoning. She was a 14 and a half. The doctor said, you, sh you guys should be the headlines in the newspaper. See, our, our bus that we were traveling on that weekend was locked on the inside. And it was such a cold day in North Carolina that the entire windows on the inside were frozen. The inside. That's how cold it was, and the bus was locked, so we should have all been dead. But my other daughter, who's, wave your hand, Alexis. She's like, Dad, not the story again. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell about God's glory and His yeah. saving power yeah. until I die, because yeah. it was a miracle. She woke up at 4 in the morning <clears throat> with stomach ache and nausea. And she woke up, tried to wake my wife, Cindy, up. My wife was not responding. And when she did respond, and she took two or three steps, she passed out right there on the floor of the bus. Well, that's when all of us got in there because she hit the ground and we got scared at four in the morning if you've ever been woken up at four in the morning. And I jumped out of my bunk, which is an interesting life in itself. And I see my wife passed out on the floor. What do you think I was thinking? I didn't even know what to think. But I picked her up and we started to walk towards the front of the bus and she passed out again for the second time. How many of you know you need God in a moment like that? Amen. So we began to pray and we began to ask the Lord. And, and the bottom line is that five hours later, and we had four children on that bus, all small, Alexis being the oldest, all saved, yeah. delivered, mm -hmm. and healed of carbon Praise monoxide God. poisoning. Yeah. To this day, we can tell you in Greenville, Tennessee, that God has saving power. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, give God praise. Don't hold back your praise this morning. I hope this isn't a church that holds the praise. We should not go to a lot of those. We go to 47 denominations. Wow. And uh, we've been in some places that you didn't think God was anywhere near the building. But God said, boys, I have you to come in there and I have you to come and minister. And so we're faithful and we will obey the Lord. How many know it's important to obey the Lord? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. So we want to sing this song and let you know that if you come in this morning and you feel dirty, spiritually dirty, and you just feel like there's no way you should even be in church this morning. Pastor Scott has no idea what you're going through. But I want to tell you, before you leave this place, you can be clean. That's right. You can be free. And you can walk out of here with the biggest smile on your face that any person ever had. I want you to worship God through this song. Amen. Amen. I see you shattered. But you see whole And I see broken But he sees beautiful And you're helping me To believe And you're restoring me by peace there's nothing too dirty that you can make worthy you wash me in mercy and I am clean there's nothing 
search and I know one just recently that I talked to just they just can't stop going to the bar they can't stop going this place and that place just searching for the next high searching for that fulfillment and deep down inside brother Jeff they just want to be clean how many can say you were there one time and you know what that was like empty and hopeless and lost without Jesus but he has made us clean what has made us clean what has made us clean is his blood and there's an old song that's not song that's sung enough. And I remember a testimony of Brother Billy Graham. We all know who Dr. Billy Graham is. Who just recently was asked in an interview. And it was a very normal interview. And most of the questions were asked as they always are. And, and uh, they simply said the question, Dr. Billy Graham, is there anything you regret? And thinking that Dr. Billy, after leading millions of people to Christ and all his crusades and all his meetings over the years, is there anything you regret, Dr. Billy Graham? And thinking he was going to say, no, I've done more than... 
I ever thought was possible through Christ. He said, I have one regret. And Brother Scott, you know what Dr. Billy Graham said? I mean, if, if anybody shouldn't have a regret, I would think it would be Billy Graham. Right. But he said, I got one regret. The one regret that I have is I wish that I had preached more about the blood. What can wash away my sin? Right. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Listen to this old song. I pray it blesses you. So we thought we'd put it on there and we'd bless a few people. Had no idea it ended up being one of our most requested songs at our services. But I pray it blesses you. It talks about the hope of heaven, and the, and the uh, thing is, is that this is just temporary. We're just I know you hear that stuff, but it's so true, it's so true. And one day we have that hope of seeing uh, Jesus Christ, of course, first and foremost, and then all those people. But you know what? That's what's home. Amen. That's what's home. So don't get so overwhelmed with the things of this earth. Because it's just temporary. Listen to this song. I pray it blesses you. Some way. 
everlasting joy in me. Where a stream of life is flowing there forever. And a crowd of life is waiting there for me. That sounds like home to me. Like the way. services over with uh, this gentleman came up to us and uh, he's like man I've heard that song before and I was like really cool he's like I was like where at he said in prison <laughs> I said do what he said yeah I kind of spent like five years in South Carolina prison and I was running some drugs or whatever and he said anyway this uh, this black choir came in to sing and they sang that song I said like are you, are you sure it was this one? Because Gary and I wrote this one. He's like, I'm certain 
you know. And it was pretty cool because he was singing it. And I thought, wow, that's cool. He knows that song, right? And we had never been to the church. So, but he said, yeah. He said, they came in and they were singing this song. And I was like, wow, in prison. That's cool. That's really cool. Uh, and well, when you hear the song, you can probably understand why a prisoner would be blessed by it because the song's called I Feel a Blessing. And uh, not a lot to, you know, most people are looking to get out, right? And so they're probably speaking life in their situation, and I'm, Jesus, get me out of here, you know, or need help or protect me from whatever. Uh, but anyway, I don't know why I said all that. I really have no That's idea right. why I said that. <laughs> That's just me. What's really cool is that we, uh, we've never been in prison as far as ministering or any other reason. Um, we've, been, <laughs> we've been invited a few times. But, um, so that was pretty cool that God, God can take the music even when we're not physically in there and can use that in a mighty way. So, um, so many great things have happened with this, this song um, that has blown Curtis. Curtis called me one time, I don't know, three or four or five years ago, whatever it was. And he says, are you sitting down? And I said, no, I was kind of busy watching. It's always sports with me. And um, he says, well, you better sit down because uh, we just got a phone call from the Christian Music Hall of Fame. And they've nominated us for Group of the Year because of I Feel a Blessing coming on. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, really? And he said, yeah. And, I mean, Curtis said, and I, I couldn't believe it. I was stunned. And I actually told him to send me the email because I really didn't believe it. I thought, you just played a joke on me. Well, it was true. And he says, guess who we're nominated against? Well, my heroes growing up were the Gaither Vocal Band. Does anybody know who the Gaither oh, Vocal yeah. Band is? And uh, those have been way before Curtis even really got into their music. I was I've just been a hardcore fan. And he says they're in our category. So then they flew us to Dallas, Texas. We go there, and wouldn't you know it, Bill won. <laughs> As if the man needs another award. But anyway, we were. Uh, you know, when they always say we put Curtis and I've always heard this, and we've been nominated. I think we've had like eight or nine nominations now. We haven't won yet. So <laughs> that's okay. Being nominated is a big. It, it really is. You know, people say, "Oh, just being nominated." Well. Any t recognition for music that you've written or done things is, is a pretty great honor, so we appreciate that. But we've become, I don't know if you may remember, uh, in California there was a lady named Susan Lucci. I don't know if any of you watch soap operas. But I remember hearing about her at college, and she had won or been nominated. Curtis, do you know what I'm talking about? She was on soap opera, and she had been nominated like 20 times and never won an award. So I, I, I say that. Some people get it, some don't, but we've become like the Susan Lucci of gospel music. But anyway. We hope you're blessed by it, because people have been blessed all over. And Curtis is like, what was that all about? <laughs> if you know who Susan Lucci is, you'll understand. But anyway, we hope you're blessed by it. God has taken this song and went to number one for us. And, but more importantly than anything else, when Curtis and I wrote this song, we wanted to bless the body of Christ, like he said, to give people hope. So I hope you're blessed by it. I feel a blessing. Listen. 
Jesus and coming on. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we do feel that Jeremiah 29, 11 is as true today as it was when it was written by the yeah. prophet. Amen. God has plans for you to give you hope, to give you a future. Amen? Amen. And that's the word of God this morning. You know what? We, we've had such a fun time. We're almost done here, but we've had such a fun time these last, I don't know, six months, Curtis and I, eight months. We put together our first Christmas album. And you say, well, that's no big deal. Well, we, we planned it out. This wasn't just going to be a bunch of Frosty the Snow. I don't want to offend you. Frosty the Snowman is your favorite song for Christmas. Or, I like all those songs. But we wanted to do some songs that would bless the body of Christ. That would be a time where you get in alone with Jesus. And you, do you love to worship? We love to worship. And uh, so we, we thought, you know, we don't, we've don't. we been singing this Christmas album since the end of November. But we want to do a couple songs. I, I pray it will bless you this morning. Uh, Curtis does such a great job on this. I don't even know where it is, Curtis. Okay, thank you. We've got a new computer here. Um, he does such a great job on this first song. And it, and it, how many know the song, Mary, Did You Know? Is that a great song? Well, that's not the one we're going to do. <laughs> that one's kind of, kind of from Mary's standpoint, her perspective. This one's from Joseph's. And uh, it's a song that most of you probably haven't heard. Some of you might have heard it. But I, I, he does such a great job talking about what if you got this message that you're going to be the stepdaddy of the Son of God. You're going to raise this kid, and he's going to save the world. It's almost too overwhelming to even say it. But what this, what this song that Curtis is going to sing about is just talks about what's probably going on in his head. How in the world and why in the world would God choose him? But he, we hope you enjoy this. This is our new Christmas album. It's called Strange Way. Hope you enjoy it. Strange way to say 
such a strange thing And you look as good as me This is such a strange thing And I can't see the world Such a strange way to yes, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Put your hand up again. You got breath. I want to make sure. Come on. We are commanded to praise Him. We praise Him. Why do we praise the Lord? You may just think this is just a word. We praise Him for what He's done for us. Has He not done enough? We can start at Calvary and go from there, but has He given you a job? Listen, I know as I say that, it may not be your favorite job and your perfect job and your dream job, but has He put food on the table? Yes. Has He showed up when your bills were due? Come on. Yes. He is faithful. Has He put a roof over your head? What about the health of your children and your grandchildren today? Think about that. Something we don't always count, but listen, that's a blessing. That is. You don't think so? Go to the local hospital. I do visitations. Curtis does visit. We go to hospitals, yeah. and we see how many people wish they could be sitting in the chair you're sitting in today. That's right. Brother Scott does visitations. He knows that's right. there's hospitals filled with people that wish they could get to church. That's it. But we praise Him for what He's done for us. We praise Him for all the good things He's done, the blessings of the Lord. The Bible says, do not forget the benefits of the Lord in Psalms. We praise Him for what He's done for us. Amen. But there's an element, there's a door, there's an atmosphere, there's a place that we want to take you just this last moment here called worship. Worship is different than praise. You know, we get thrown into categories. Curtis and Gary do praise and worship music. No, we don't do praise and worship. We are worshipers. Amen. We are commanded and we praise Him. But worship is deeper. Worship, if, if praise says... I thank God for the clothes on my back and I praise God for the shoes on my feet. Worship says, God, if I don't have any of those things, you're still right. worthy. Thank you. See, you can come in here with absolutely nothing. You can come in here, as I did, as I walked out of my house this morning and looked at my car and I had a flat tire. I'm going to lead people in praise and worship. It happens to all of us. Terrible. I mean, it was, it was like, oh man, are you kidding me? And Curtis, bless his heart, had just set this whole thing up by himself. And he doesn't complain about stuff like that. Because he's a worshiper. He's a servant of the Lord. But the devil will put obstacles and he'll put things in your way. And we can all sit here and say, well, this isn't going right in my life. I'm not getting this amount of money. My kids aren't saved. They're running from God. We don't have food on the... That's right. He's still worthy. Yes. Did you hear what I said? He's still worthy. Amen. So what that tells me this morning, folks, is that you have no excuse not to worship. That's right. Yeah. Because worship, if I and I can't sum it up, because as a worshiper, there's just I'm so filled with worship. But if I had to sum it up with the earthly language that we have on this earth, if there was one word that I could pick above every word in the, in the English language, and if I opened up Webster's dictionary, here's a word I would use for what worship truly is. And if you never forget this, if you remember everything, forget everything but this. Remember this: worship is your surrender. Mm. Very good. Your surrender. It's basically saying, Lord, I can't do it. I, I've tried, and, and some people, are, it's harder than others. To, I'm one of those kind of people that has to have my hand in control on things. But when I get into his presence, I have no control. Because <laughs> it's all about him. Yes, sir. And those are, the, are those not the best services we've ever had, Curtis, is the ones where we just say, Lord, take over. And I pray this morning it is like that. We are worshipers. I pray you are a worshiper. You better get ready for it because when you get to heaven, that's what there's going to be a lot of. There's not going to be a lot of football games. There's not going to be a lot of basketball games, all things that Curtis and I enjoy on this earth. But there's going to be worship. There's going to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So during this song, can we just close our eyes? We're just about ready to finish here. Can we close our eyes? And we're going to sing this song. And I want you just in the next four to five minutes to give God what he deserves. Can we do that? Even if you've had the most terrible week, the most terrible month, the most terrible start of 2016, give him the worship that he deserves right now. Regardless of how you feel, the Bible says to crucify the flesh. To, get the, to, to cause the flesh to submit to what's inside of you, which is your spirit. That's what's going to live eternally. And let's together, church, let's worship him for these next few moments together. Can we do that? He's worthy. Father, I see that you will draw me a light in the sand. I want to be standing by your side, holding your hand. Let your kingdom come. Let it live in me. This is my prayer. It is my plea. Father, I see that you will draw. The light 